What's up guys, it's Rota here and welcome back to yet another amazing video on the channel. For today I got you a sort of test hand video of one of my favourite decks of all time. It is Monarchs as you can tell by the fact that there's no extra deck and Erebus is on the screen. So if you do enjoy this type of content make sure you do leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. I reply to every single one of you guys. Without any further ado, let's get into test hand number one. So if you guys are unfamiliar with monarchs this deck does brick a lot and if you do want to see the build i am currently test handing make sure that you do go down below and look at my updated monarch deck profile post cyberstorm access i think this deck is still very good and it got a massive boost with the new spell it is still a bit bricky though so hopefully these test hands you will not see me rick and you'll see me sort of play it out and why this deck has so many cool interactions so, it's been shuffled pretty well. Let's give it to our opponent, two cut in half. Let's say we somehow won the dice roll. And let's go first. So we're gonna start off with a Pantheism of the Monarchs with a Cash Tira Fenrir, a Erebus. We got a Eidos, and we also have a March of the Monarchs. So this hand's actually pretty damn good. We're gonna start off by special summoning our Fenrir. We're gonna do Fenrir effect. This is gonna add us our Fenrir. I love how that interaction works and why Fenrir is just so goddamn good in Monarchs. It's a free body. It's just incredible. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to, if we get drilled here, just want to quickly mention, we can still normal summon Eidos and then tribute for both with the Erebus. Let's say we don't get drilled though. What we're going to do is now we're going to activate our Pantheism. This literally does not matter if we get Ashed. Obviously better if we don't get Ashed, but we just really want it in the grave for its effect. So we're going to pitch March. We're going to cut our deck again. So before we draw two cards, opponent gives us the go ahead. We can draw two. We draw a idea and we draw another pantheism. And it goes to the graveyard. Now what we're going to do is we're going to banish our pantheism. This is the once per turn effect, unlike the draw. And now we are just straight up going to search a tenacity of the monarchs. Now, while the deck's still in my hand, I'm going to tenacity. I'm going to reveal Erebus. It's going to go to the graveyard, and we're going to search for our field spell. Domain of the True Monarchs. Crazy card. Really, really good. So this is our hand still. Gone plus one. Now what we can do is, if we want to play it really safe, we activate field spell, which I'll leave here, and then we just tribute over the Fenrir with our... Uh, Erebus because now it's one less tribute which we'll do now we'll reveal it and it'll be one less tribute or what I like to do is to sort of save the Fenrir is normal the Adios and then this gives us the additional normal summon we can then tribute Adios and you know tribute summon the Erebus for one tribute we're going to do Erebus effect we're going to send two cards from our deck to the graveyard to basically hand loop our opponent for one going first because I doubt they're going to have anything in the graveyard or on the field we're going to send the Prime Monarch, and we're going to send yet another Pantheism for Recursion. Basically, just for Recursion, we can banish it and get a search immediately during our next turn. And that's pretty, really pretty good, if you ask me, because now, as long as we control our Erebus, our opponent cannot use cards from the extra deck, so they can't special summon cards from the extra deck, which is absolutely huge against, like, 99% of decks that isn't called Flunderies. We have a face up banishment as well and if they do out the Erebus we can always add it back to our hand by pitching another pantheism so that was test hand number one not the most crazy combo but sometimes you've got to keep it simple with monarchs and just sort of play to what the deck strengths are and it is definitely in locking the opponent out of special summoning from the extra deck that is pretty much the main gimmick of this deck and why i think it's so good i mean you tell me what deck doesn't want to summon from its extra deck you tell me i think pretty much most decks in the extra deck in our uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! want to summon from the extra deck, excuse me. So let's give it another shuffle. Hopefully we can see hands like that throughout this, you know, test hand video. I do expect a brick because this is Monarchs we're talking about, but let's see. We've shuffled up, we're going to cut it in half. We're going to actually cut it in triple here. Our opponents change it up. We're going to go first. We're going to draw a Erebus, which is nice, a Tenacity. We're going to get a Domain. We're going to get a Antruf, Antrum Fright, which is a, one of, become, quickly becoming one of my favorite cards, and another Cash Tier Fenrir. I mean, that's just so good. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to summon our Fenrir. Fenrir effect, we're going to add, you guessed it, we're going to add Fenrir. 
You could also add the other Cashtera card, the card that just summons himself, Arise Heart. But I feel like most of the time I just draw him without the Fenrir in and he's a brick because you can only special summon himself if you control the Cashtera. But you, that's an option if you want to get, you know, an extra bodies on the field. That's always an option. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scale our Untrimmed from right. We're going to destroy it. We're going to draw one card. So let's cut it before we draw. Draw. We draw a Idea. Untrimmed from right effect is going to summon itself to the extra deck. And that gives us loads of bodies. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Tenacity of the Monarchs. We are going to get Erebus, reveal Erebus, and we're going to add any Monarch spell here. I'm not actually sure, to be honest, what we grab. Uh, it's a, this, this, is, this is a bit of a difficult one, I'm not going to lie. We don't want a Pantheism here. You could, but we already have the Domain in hand, which is the main win condition, as I said before. So I guess here we just go to something that's going to reinforce the win condition in either March of the Monarchs or Return of the Monarchs. I think uh, in this scenario, I guess you go for March, just to sort of give your Erebus a bit more protection. I think that is the actual play. Could also go, if we had the double normal summon spell, we'd definitely go for, um, what, what's the card for? We'll definitely go for the one that searches Return of the Monarchs, but we don't, so we're gonna go for March. And against Sky Strikers, don't underestimate how good this targeting protection is. It's just, just broken. Now what we're going to do is we're going to activate our domain. So we're going to put it here. We are going to activate our March of the Monarchs. We're going to reveal Erebus off domain. We do, I usually don't use the normal summon because if they ash this or they impound the idea, we're sort of stuck. We haven't got two normal summons to play with. So I just play it safe. I'm going to tribute, and this gets banished. We're going to tribute the Entrum Fright, and we're going to normal summon our Erebus. And you guessed it, it's pretty much the same as before. We are going to send to the graveyard a Pantheism, and we're going to send our only trap in the deck, the Prime Monarch. And we only play it at one because we don't really need any more. And that is still really good in my opinion. That's a great hand, to be honest. And now, of course, we're going to hand loop them for one off the Erebus. So you saw there's a bit of a different way of getting there this time. Still achieve more or less the same result. The opponent can't special summon. We have a Fenrir for a banish. We have an Erebus, which is protected this time. And yeah, just kind of cool, to be honest. Let's go on to the third test hand here. So again, let's shuffle up. I, I really want to show you plays with the new spell, the Time Terry Morganite, so I'm hoping that we do draw that and I get to show you just how cool that card is. And also we can see Aether, we haven't seen any of the other Monarch, just Erebus, so where are the other guys? Come on guys, don't be shy. So we're going to cut the deck again, we're going to cut it in four this time. Again, let's go first, we're going to start our hand, we're going to draw a Pantheism, we're going to draw a Domain. We're going to draw another Pantheism, we're going to draw a Book of Moon, and we're going to draw a Monarch's Stormforth. Now, this isn't looking like a great hand, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but I guess what we're going to do is we're going to have to play it out. So we're going to go Pantheism, we're going to pitch our Stormforth here, and we're going to draw two cards. We draw an Eidos, and we draw a March of the Monarch. Still not great, still, need, still needs, you know, to dig a bit. I'm not sure if we pantheism here first. I guess we could. But I think what we're going to do is we're just going to straight up pantheism again. We're just going to send March to the graveyard. We're going to draw another two cards. We got another Stormforth. And we got the Aether, which is what we were really desperately hoping for there. We needed a tribute summon. And this is the hand so far. I guess what we do now is kind of a bit annoying because we're a bit vulnerable here. I guess what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate the field spell. We're gonna reveal Aether, there's gonna be one tribute. We're gonna normal Eidos, use its effect. If they Impum avail this, we can chain the Book of Moon, flip him down and he'll still resolve. So we do have a sort of mini call by here in the Book of Moon, which is why I think Book of Moon is just absolutely great. Let's assume they don't do anything. That goes through, we can then tribute this into our Aether. Aether effect, we're gonna send two, but we're not gonna send one from the deck. We're not gonna shuffle one from the hand into the deck, we're actually gonna summon one. And since we have the Stormforth, I think we're gonna summon another Aether, to be honest with you, because it'll go back to our hand at the end phase. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send two to the graveyard, we're gonna send our only trap, and we're gonna send, I don't know if we send a Pantheism here, because we already have two in graveyard and we still haven't used one. So I think here we're just going to send something that we don't need anymore. We're going to send the return and we're going to summon our Aether to the field. 
Now what we do is we're going to set two. They are locked. We are now going to use pantheism effect. We're going to reveal three, which I guess maybe we could have done before, but it doesn't really matter what three you reveal to be honest. I guess we just do three tenacity or whatever. I guess three tenacity. You just add a tenacity to hand. So that's cool. And now what we're going to do is we're going to end our aether. We'll come back to our hand. And that's pretty much the turn. So we have a lock, and we also have the cool thing about it is you have a Monarch Stormforth, which we can chain to our Aether. Aether will banish the spell out of the graveyard. We can tribute one of the opponents, and then we can summon again during our opponent's turn. Send two, and we can summon our Kuraz, and then pop two cards on the field, which is lovely. And of course, we have the Book of Moon. And we're back. I apologize for the little cut. My mom came into my room. Just checking I was alive and making sure I wasn't talking to myself. I confirmed I was indeed alive and that I'm not crazy and that I'm going to be going on to hand number three. So let's make sure we do give it a shuffle. Let's make sure that we can give it to our opponent to cut. Bang. And let's draw our five cards. We got a ether, tenacity, a, oh, stuck together, a dose. A Stormforth, come on, we have something different, and a Domain. Still more or less the same hand, still very playable by all means. I'm going to quickly just reshuffle it because we've seen we're going to end up with the Field Spell and we're going to end up with an Ether. What was our sixth draw? It was a March, so I'm just going to keep drawing until we get something relatively new so I can show you guys what the new cards do. So let's give that a reshuffle. Let's hope we draw some of the di some different cards so i can show you guys different parts of the deck okay it's been cut well, it's been shuffled now it's been cut let's go first again so we're gonna get a prime monarch we're gonna get a domain we're gonna get antrim fright we're gonna get a ados and we're gonna get a time tearing morganite finally problem is this might not be playable depending on what the antrim fright draws us so i think the only play we can do here is scale antrim fright Use this effect to draw one and hope that it's something playable. It's another domain. So this is a brick, very, very sadly. This is, yeah, this is basically a brick. There's nothing else we can do here. We haven't got any Monarchs to tribute. Let's just say this is a complete brick. So let's change this. Let's change the domain to a Erebus. Just so I can show you sort of what the deck can do with the time tearing Morganite as well. So now what we're going to do is activate on Trump Fright. He's going to summon it himself. I'm going to activate Domain. Domain effect. We're going to reveal our Erebus, which is cool. We're going to now tribute our Erebus for our Antrim Fright. Now we're going to use his effect. He's going to send two to the graveyard. So, shame that we have the Prime Monarch in hand. But what we're going to do is we're going to send another Pantheism, I guess. And we're going to send... What do we want to send? Do we send the Prime Monarch from hand? It doesn't seem good, to be honest. It really doesn't. Uh, we can get Tenacity, but without a Monarch in hand, that's kind of useless. So I'm not entirely sure what we send here, you know. Because the Prime Monarch doesn't really get us anything at the moment. I guess we just send something that we don't need. We send the Stormforth here. Uh, opponent is extra deck locked. Will now spin a card from their hand into their deck. Now we're gonna go pantheism effect. I think here what we have to do is we have to reveal. We have to reveal two pantheism and something that's just crazy good, which I don't think apart from pantheism we can't get, which is kind of sad. So I, it basically means we're guaranteed to get the third card. So I don't really know. I guess we grab March here just for the extra protection of Erebus. Let's say for some reason, in this situation, you always give the March. Let's say they don't. Let's say they give us the Pantheism just so we can, just so I can show you guys what the different things that the deck does. So they give us the Pantheism. The, this sort of opens up everything. Now we're going to make sure that we, you know, cut it sort of opens up everything a little, depending again on what we draw. We're going to Pantheism, we're going to pitch the Prime Monarch to Grave, we're going to draw two cards. We get an idea, and we get another Antrim Fright. Still not great, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. Not great at all. 
I guess what we do now is we pry Monarch Summon by banishing Stormforth. And this may seem like a weird play, but this basically can protect us from... This can basically protect us from the out, uh, uh, Erebus. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to Tribute Summon for a Antrim Fry here. Pretty nice. And now we're going to activate the Time Tearing Morganite. We would have to activate Time Terror Morganite and then normal summon this, so my bad, I skipped a step. Now we can't have hand traps. Well, big whoop, we don't play any, and now we get two draws every draw phase. So and we have the Metro Deck Lock. So a bit different. I'm just gonna pick cards that I show you I wanna just show you the interactions with because these test hands aren't showing you the cool interactions that I want to show you. So it gets cool interactions happen when you open a combo of cards, that being the Time Terror Morganite and the Return of the Monarchs in particular. This is a crazy, crazy combo. It doesn't even matter what we tribute summon here. Let's just let's just grab an Erebus because he's been showing up a lot today. So regardless of what the situation is, if you can combo these three cards, they're searchable. All of them are searchable apart from the time tearing. So you can open the time tearing and sort of manipulate these two to your hand. What you're gonna want to do is you're gonna wanna get bodies on the field. You don't even necessarily, yeah, you do need the time tearing in this situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our normal summon on Erebus. We're gonna have Mo Return of the Monarchs on the field. We're gonna normal summon on Erebus. We're gonna do its effect. We're gonna send, it doesn't matter here, to be honest with you, it's just an example. I guess if you wanna play it, you know, you wanna play it to perfection, you wanna do the, the best possible way we're going to send those two to the graveyard. Now we're going to trigger return. Return, this is where it gets cool. Return is actually going to search us for our Majesty's Fiend in this situation. Now, Majesty's Fiend has Monarch stats, which is cool. In the past, you'd search it and you'd have to wait. But since we have the time tearing Morganite, you can immediately activate the Morganite, meaning you have an additional normal summon. But you're, like, you're wondering, hey, what are you going to normal summon? You know, We're going to sack our Pantheism. I know it's a bit of a weird play, but we need the Pantheism to go. To get the extra body to then tribute summon and summon our majesty's fiend so that i think that is a really cool combo you don't have to banish the pantheism i'm assuming if you do the combo there'll be other monarch spell cards in the graveyard but for this example you just banish the pantheism and now you have you know these two and hopefully domain on the field meaning your opponent has no monster effects and they can't special summon from the extra deck which is just crazy in my opinion so that is sort of what I wanted to show you with Monarchs, guys. I know you guys said, you know, there's a lot of comments saying, this deck looks really good, but how exactly do you play it? Well, here you go. And if you want to see the build, make sure you do check out the post Cyberstorm Access Monarch deck profile that is already on the channel. So I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. It's time!